I spent the past year developing my game. All right. Hey, Cooper. Copper. My man. Good morning. Hello. All right. Yesterday we did this nicely looking window in order to level up our uh, slash skill. Top chat. Yeah. Any top chatters. And today we will add font to this. I think it's time we get font rendering done uh, we should have a function called draw text that takes in text and draws us a text and it should display us the level ups for each uh, should I display us the descriptions but let's first get font rendering in and once we have font rendering maybe we will be able to um, put in some skill descriptions as well let's see here uh hey haskas welcome for that in order to uh, get font rendering i have a library called free tab free free type we need a library for that uh, because I do not. Okay. Thank you very much for that thank you very much for that edition that was very helpful really really helpful and for that i have played around off stream with opengl and font rendering a bit i have a free type library that is already uh that is nicely packaged into a dot lib folder and a dot include folder and we are going to use that in a folder so we're just gonna copy this over because i don't want to download something from the internet and having to deal with that again because i know that this works so we're gonna use that in our clone we already have a third part third party thing and yes we can replace the stb image in that library and now we have free type and in order to enable free type what we need to do is we need to go into build and add it add in some stuff to the base so we should really have a comment here i don't like that we don't have any uh, syntax highlighting here but we should have a rem that says um, building game or that's the game game dll and then over here we have the base base executable cmake when cmake no cmake no cmake and for that we need to include or link some stuff and I'm just going to copy what I have in Motion Canvas. So in Motion Canvas, we need to link against the... We need to at first add a lip path. Hey, hello there, Bonnie Montana, my man. Good day. Welcome. 
we add to we need to add a lip path to so that the linker of uh the compiler or that the compiler knows where to look for libraries and so we need to uh, actually write this line here which is what was that again slash lib path and then we say okay that's in third party slash lib uh, yeah yeah hey ashen my man and in there we can also put it at the end that is the uh, i think it's called free type free type dot lib so this is linking done and i think that's all we need to do because we are already including third party and that should give us yeah Attention. should let us link completed. and now in the gl renderer we can start including our we can start including our font or free type and the way i like doing this is through init objl functions init objl functions i like to call init font taking in a font size so i like to take and make an internal uh, bool probably init font taking in an int font size and inside this init font we want to define or we want to load in or we want to use the library and uh, i have already written this code in motion canvas before to test it out and so we're just gonna yoink some code here not the true type but the free type and the problem about free type is first we need to include the free type build and then the free type header uh, we can do that but if we do it like that like let's not include them for now this should just build right Attention. if we include Building free type build all should be Attention. Building completed. uh maybe i did not add in the correct third party oh i added i added in another include here the third party include we can do that too so instead of just including third party we can also slash include the third party slash include which is arguably kind of annoying okay so now we we, we can include this one but if we include the free type header which is literally just free type dot header, I think. Then we get some errors. Attention. Building it basically tells us that something is defined using a weird type. And the problem with this is that FT face internal is defined. This is a define. They define internal, the internal keyword. They use the internal keyword internally. I don't know exactly what that does for them, but since we are in our defines, we define internal to static or static to internal um, we need to undefine internal just for free type and so that's what i that's what i have been doing here free type uses internal so we undef internal and then after we have included free type, we define internal again. So that just for this library, we uh, we don't use internal there, but that's not our code, right? And you see, this is why I don't li like using libraries that much because of these uh, collisions, right? And also because free type obviously uses their own memory and allocates their own memory. And like, I don't like that either. You know that I don't like allocating memory. Getting hungry, but not... But I'm too lazy to get up, Sag. Yeah, but snacks are really healthy. Why would you just keep snacks on hand? That's why you should keep snacks on hand. Hey, my man, true. <laughs> Isn't getting sad about that. Okay, so now we have... Now we can actually include free type. Building completed. And use it. And I'm just gonna yoink a couple of functions because I have written that before and I don't want to rewrite that. So we're just gonna... I'm just gonna yoink most of this stuff. The only thing that we will change is the font that we use. We choose our own font. But I'll go through what each of these mean and what I'm doing. So it's not like just like, oh, let me copy paste a bunch of code 
blah 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 right i don't like that you you know that so when using free type we need to initialize that first and we just call that we just call the init free type not sure what it does but it sets some stuff in a ft library structure or class or whatever and then we say we want to load in a true type font file into what they call a face i don't know why they call that face for me this is just a true type font file but okay so we create this face from a true type font file and this is what we're gonna change because we have no font go mono bold T ttf we don't have any of that we choose our own font in a second here and i think we should choose a pixel art font because we are making a pixel art game and we could then also check how the pixel art font will look in the game so yeah and always i'm always checking against these if they are unequal to zero then that means there was an error and I, I have set it up so that uh, every time there will be an assertion hit, we get a logging of the assertion and then we return false. And we can use that in the initialization of our renderer to say, oh, if we are not able to initialize our font, maybe we shouldn't start the game at all. Right, so any of these return false if anything of this fails. So yeah, we load in our font and then we do the same thing that, we, uh, that you can do in... Uh, uh, stb true type which i don't like very much it uh, you scale the font to a some sort of font size that's a pixel size usually and then it creates lines for that size i suppose after that i create a bitmap on the stack two columns uh, or columns and rows 512 pixels so basically i create a texture of 512 by 512 on the stack which is dangerous of course it can exhaust the stack very easily uh but so far it has not done that for me in any other application so that sh seems to be fine after that the memory is freed anyways and then we start going through our characters from 32 which is the space to 127 which i think is the tilde or something not sure if it's a tilde but we we basically get the ascii characters and uh, in order to do that i don't know what what the ft get char index does uh, i guess it's loading the character or the curves of the character because then we need to load a glyph and render a glyph basically create a bitmap and that gives us metrics that we can use to define like for example the width and height is the width of and height of the bitmap the advance is the and i think i have a good uh ori advance etf i think that one right yeah no no that's not it that is actually not it I think that's one that's the one i was looking at yeah the advance is how much we need to advance where's the advance over here how much we need to skip in terms of pixels to get to the next character and then there's some a lot more other metrics and you can also use kerning and all of that stuff but we're gonna choose a monospaced font so kerning will not be as much of an issue so yeah, we get all of these metrics. The X offset means how much do we need to move? Like if we have if we have like a cursor, right? Our cursor is right here where we start. And then the X offset of the uh, the X offset of the uh, glyph tells us how much we need to move to the left or to the right to get it into the correct position X Y. So it's nicely aligned. And the same goes for the y offset how much do we need to move the glyph up or down like for example a uh, a dot needs to be moved down to be on the baseline right if we have a dot here right here like if we don't move it down by the y offset it would be drawn at the very top which is not what we want so we we calculate those from the metrics of the glyph i didn't i didn't uh, write this code myself 
I was looking like you can you can get the code from here. That's where I got it from. Seems to be working quite nicely. So yeah, you get these metrics and then we go through the bitmap and draw the current character of the bitmap in our own bitmap. So we basically fill our own bitmap and then we store the important information in a glyph. And what is a glyph? A glyph is a texture offset, a sprite size, an advance and an offset. Like what I was talking about. These two things basically mean where in the texture atlas that we are going to create is the glyph at which part do we need to take and how many pixels is it big. That's the texture offset and sprite size. Think of it like a texture atlas and you have like an index or like an offset into that atlas and that's how big it is. That's what a glyph is and we need those glyphs of course in our own renderer and I think we can put that like below the texture or on top of the texture and then we put that into the render data. So I suppose this glyph in our case needs to be part of render data and if it's render data then we need to put it in the render interface. Uh, in my case, in this case we just have I just have glyphs here. Wait, do we need that? Do we need to expose that? I don't think we need to expose those. No, no, no. Wait, we don't need to expose these. We don't need to expose the glyph because who cares? We don't need to know about glyphs. We just need to have an array of transforms and materials. So let's go back here and put it into the renderer. Great. Yeah, let's put it here. My favorite to cook is risotto with tomatoes. Basil, are you guys talking about food? Nice. And then we put in the glyph atlas, the glyphs, 127 glyphs. Please copy that properly, bitch. Can you please copy that properly? How many times do I have to copy this, you dumb fuck? Holy shitballs. Are you kidding me? Dude. whatever anyways so we have we now have glyphs inside our gl context that we can assign values to and we have this glyph structure that we use and so we do that for every glyph boom 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 uh, after we are done with this we make sure that backslash ends also have a size or a sprite size actually this should be the advance right this should be the advance i mean i'm using sprite size in the other one but it should be advance yeah it should be advance and then that is a oh it's also an ivac too okay and after we are done with free type, we basically call done free type, and this probably frees all the memory. I hope. I hope. I just made a ton of chili, fresh schnauze. I tipped it off with some Tabasco. No, all I taste is Tabasco. Sanch, kill me. <laughs> oh man, that sucks. Bruh. Oh man. So yeah, and after we are done with the font atlas or uh, with the uh, bitmap we have filled the bitmap with our data then we go ahead and generate a texture and uh, upload that texture to the gpu this is the uploading part and we don't need to generate any bitmaps that's not needed yeah that's what we do uh, that's how we get font into a bitmap in our game um Well, that's how we get font into OpenGL. Now, I wonder if there's U8 undeclared identifier. Unsigned char. 
attention. Okay, that's it. I didn't have a U8 in this one over here. We just have unsigned chars. Okay, so it seems like this will work. But we also need to change our fragment shader. Currently, we only have one uniform sampler. But we need to have two. So we need to get another one that's called the font atlas. And uh, that wasn't so easy to set up for me because I've never done that in I've never done that in OpenGL and it seems like the way I got it working was by saying I have a binding 0 and a binding 1 a texture atlas and a font atlas uh, so the only thing that changed is a layout binding in front of these two and then I can I can access these two textures Hello, back from work. Any W's today? Oh, we got a couple of couple of W's today. Yes, we now have Why is this one always open? We now have multiple collisions. I can now do this. Watch. Come on. I hate how slow Visual Studio Code is. I can now like ignore this one over here. I can now rotate these. Now I have multiple collision boxes, right? And then I play, let's say this one right here. Oh yeah, look, this guy is being blocked. Oh, I think he's still colliding and therefore he has chosen his path. Yeah. Look. Let's restart. Let me move this. Like that. We have multiple collision boxes running. I think sometimes he still chooses the wrong location. But yeah, he's slowly moving here. Then he gets to this point. Wow, I managed to break it the first time. Nice. Very cool. But yeah, we have mostly, we have it mostly working. I guess I managed to, I didn't manage to uh, break it with my examples on stream today. But yeah, that's what we have currently. Doesn't look like vampire survivors to me. Bye. <laughs> Fuck this guy. Yeah. And so that's what we have, and now we can basically create some weird obstacles in the map. And maybe even make it so that enemies are completely stuck. Which I suppose is fine, because these obstacles will not be placed indefinitely. Right, so if, if, they, if I manage to trap some of them between two points, that's fine. Because they, one of them will disappear after like 5 seconds. Yeah. And so I will use this to create ice walls, for example. And then we also, we also created a, another image of... We also created another image of this guy over here. We made a new animation. We made a new picture for the animation. So there's 3 pictures left to do. I still think he should slide here. But I guess it's just how this is programmed here. <laughs> He's just moving this way. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what we did. And uh, currently in Vampire Survivors, I'm working on adding font. Uh, so yeah, we need those two bindings. And then in our font, in our render where we apply or where we supply the font to the shaders where we bind the font, we need to activate or we need, we need to say which binding we reference by calling GL texture one or GL active texture. And then this texture one seems to be the binding index. Texture one seems to be binding index one. And uh, when we initialize our other texture, we need to say that we are using texture zero, which is which would be the binding index zero. And that's how I got it working in my game. And if I build now, it should just 
run Building because I'm not actually assigning the Fonta Plus right now. I'm not assigning it yet. That's the wrong game. That's actually the wrong game. That's literally the wrong game. Has it clapped? Good. So yeah, it, it just works. Very nice. So we now have two textures in our shader that we can use. And in order to use font, uh, what I like to do is in our shader header, I want to use a new rendering option and I call that rendering option font, which is bit number two. And then in the fragment shader, we could check and we need to supply that rendering option, of course. I suppose we can apply that as a layout location is zero in int or in flat int render options and then these will be one and this will be two is your php game kappa is your php game what 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 and then we can check if we need the texture chords anyways. But we could check if uh, bool render options and render underscore option font. Then we draw a font. Otherwise, Otherwise, we uh, Texel fetch from the texture atlas. So that should still not change anything unless we don't change the vertex shader, then we have a problem. We should put in a layout, location is zero, is out, int render options. And uh, then we put these this to one and this to two. Not gonna lie, I have all PHP books on my bookshelf. Nice, I guess. I don't know. Uh, this inverse color is that. Do we supply the color? And over here we could say, okay, the uh, render options is t dot render options if it's called render options. And for that I need to check. Ah, it's render options. Yeah, so. That should supply the render options to our shader. Undefined render option font. Hmm? I thought I supplied that. I thought I changed that. Render option font. Hmm? Oh, I see. I see. Maybe it's easier to supply a bool to render font for now. Would that be inefficient, guys? The reason why we don't know about render option font is because we are not including our shader header. So I would have to make the same thing that I'm doing with the fragment shader i would have to do the same thing with the vertex shader i think over time we want to have that anyways suppose creating the program we can do vertex shader sources and then fragment shader sources Could say here we have a vertex shader we have a fragment shader we also assert the fragment shader 
fail to allocate space for rag shader or fail to yeah i'm back with tea and biscuits hey my man welcome back asian gl shader source gl compile shader gl create shader file size do we need the file size we don't right so that is the vertex shader vertex shader boom and then we can validate if the shader works for that we call it shader success and that is the shader log and i would like to put this to 1024 we call it uh, vertex shader id shader success shader success and that is the shader log that is the vertex shader ID. And instead of 512, we have 1024. And that is the vertex or the shader log. So we insert that and return zero over here. But it should return false. It should we return false? not zero and we do the same thing for the fragment shader and i guess we'll just get those two shaders outside here like that we create two shaders the vertex and the fragment shader and for the fragment shader we also use that and then we do that one over here shader source that is fragment shader Shader ID, every source that's vertex sources. This one's gonna call gonna be called fragment sources and fragment sources. There we go. And over here we have the fragment header, we have the shader header, and we have the core. And that means in our dot frag, we can no longer use the core. And then I guess we do the same thing. We call it shader lock. Fail to compile vertex shader. Boom. Shader lock and instead of the vertex shader ID we use the rack shader id there's only two hmm? one file the shaders what and after that we create the program and we validate if the validate if program works. Okay. I'm pretty sure I missed something. Fragment shader, undeclared identifier. Is it called frag shader? Called frag shader. Yeah. Instead of fragment, we have frag shader. 
And then fragment sources. Oh yeah, these are called vertex sources yet. Frag sources. Shader sources. Shader success. Okay, we are able to do this. We are able to compile this now. Attention. Which would allow us to... It should give us the exact same result if everything went right. Oh, look. It works. Damn. So many W's today. Bruh. I've been programming for like 35 minutes and everything just worked. Man, what a W day today. Bruh. This is awesome. Cool. Okay, now let's try to init font after we loaded our texture. I guess I want to call init font with a font size of, let's see, how much font size am I using here? Twenty-eight. I think twenty-eight is a little too small. But okay. Collecting W's. Oh yeah, coffee lava. Yes, 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 yes. Until tomorrow when hate open gl, then the next day. Love open gl, then the next day. Hate open gl. Okay, speak cloud. Oh, minus speak. You have to do speak minus speak now. That's how it works. Fringe. Fringe. Team Germany can learn something from you with W's. No. Okay, I'm I mean Seems like it's uh, taking a, it's setting some sort of, it's setting some sort of. Speak plus sound effect is not working properly. Uh, to me, it sounds like it is setting the location where it is supposed to uh, take the part of the sound, right? The range, and then it's applying that to every word that comes after it. Like, it's not resetting that after the word was already spoken, like the U. It's not resetting the range back to full. It keeps the range. That's what seems to be happening. Only 35 minutes, noob. Fuck this. Okay, now we call init font, but we don't have a font in our thing. And I don't want to crash this, so let's get a font. Time to get a font, guys. It's time to get a font. Fuck Pixel Art TTF font free. We wanna have a free TTF font. Pixel Art font, the font. I don't like it. This one looks like shit. They are not making a good... They are not showing off these fonts very well. Really terrible, terrible... Terrible way of showing fonts. This is also terrible. I don't 
like it. It's shit. Fuck this, I'm turning my PC on. Then Kimono. Where's the one website where I could get fonts for free? This one looks decent. Da font. Da font, but look at this. Oh, yeah. Pixel art. What about this one? Looks decent, I would say. That. What about this one? This one also looks kind of nice. Fonts galore, bro. It is same license. That Gazzy snippet, lol. Oh, you know, yeah. You know that one? How about this one? It's 100% free. Sixteen pixels, twenty-one pixels. Two million downloads. Mono. Okay, I'm downloading this. Please just be one font, thank God. Get a few you like for testing. Yeah. Later. We'll do that later. We'll try out one first. I just love how I copy this and it's copying the complete opposite. All right, let's see what happens if we call in it font. Will the game crash or not? Failed to load TTF file. Uh, yeah, it does. It was not able to load the TTF file, but we should have it in fonts. Oh, it's called font, not fonts. That's my fault. I'm a dumbass. Okay, good. That's fine. Try that again. Oh, it just works. Nice. All right. Uh, then I suppose the only thing we need to do is when pixel is fetch. Fault? Shut up. Smirking face. Pst, 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 pst. Font atlas. Attention. Building completed. Okay, let's make a quick draw text function. And I'm gonna yoink there too. <laughs> I already wrote all of these. It's not that much code. It's literally this little amount of code. We'll go through this. I'll explain what that means. But I don't want to write this again if I've done this already. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. No! Stop it! God! Why is my brain sometimes like... I literally pressed the exact... Like, completely wrong buttons. But this time you support UTF-8. Yeah. <laughs> Building completed. Okay, bro. Guys, I need to go to the bathroom real quick. Oh, I need to go to the bathroom. No. Be right back real quick.
Smirking face, smirking face, smirking face. Ever since I was six years old, the second I saw something robot related I got a massive erection, I discovered masturbation at the age of 11 and started masturbated to robot porn ever since, I recently found this show called Murder Drones, I have been fapping to it for the past 5 months and my penis appears to be growing in size. What the fuck did I just listen to? Ow! What the fuck did I just listen to? Huh? How did that work here? Huge salami is overrated, Satch. Attention, building completed. Render interface .cpp. Oh, fuck, I need the glyphs. I need to know the glyphs here. I need to know the glyphs inside the raw data, inside the render data. Huh? So I need to know about glyph here. Okay, so we have to put the glyph, we have to expose the glyph, otherwise it doesn't work because we don't know what we're talking about when we are rendering from the game. So. That needs to be known. Attention. And then Building completed. it uses the pointer of render data. I hate pineapples and I'm tired of pretending I don't. The way this stupid thing you call fruit exits makes me wanna commit several types of war crimes. I fucking hate pineapples. I hate them more than anything else. The way the stupid fruit just exists bothers me greatly. I just wish that every stupid fucking penny apple would disappeared from Earth. Render data does not exist. Felonies while we don't look. I'm sure every single one of world's problems comes from this stupid little object. Attention. Mm. Building completed. Render data undeclared identifier. Render data. GL context.render. Ah, I see. It's called GL context.render data. Attention. Building completed. Good. Attention. Building completed. GL context.font atlas ID. Oh, that is not something that I need to put into the render data. That can be in the geo context. Attention. Building completed. All right. Um, what did I do now? What did I change? I added in the draw text function, right? Nothing else should have changed. Okay, so now I should be able, potentially should be able to draw text in the game. 
Potentially. Again. Hypothetically. I know right? pineapples are just waiting for an opportunity to attack. Just wait. Some of you normies may think that Hitler caused World War II, but you are wrong, it was the pineapples. God, I just wished this stupid fruit would disappear completely, I was in the army for 10 years, fighting in Iraq. You know Osama Bin Laden? Yes, there was no Bin Laden, it was the pineapples that we found once we raided the war criminal's house. Attention. Okay, big time, time for big tests. Will we have font? I don't know why I get a key press space thing. Oh, we do, but it's it's all black. It's all black. Very interesting. Wonder why that is. Time to look for render doc stuff here. It might be the texture that we use is a little bit too. It's the wrong texture. Let's see. I just old. fucking can't live anymore thinking I live in the same planet as these. Hey, that's enough. That's enough. It's enough. It's enough. Stop spamming these. Stop! Stop! Look, our texture atlas. Wow, that looks cringe. I mean, it looks okay, I guess. That's small. Maybe we need to make the pixel size bigger. Texture looks awful. Relax, baby catgus. Shh. 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 This looks shit. This looks very shit. I mean, it's fine if it was showing something, but it wasn't. Wonder why. Not showing anything. Wait, there is a red dot. There's a red dot here. Oh no, that's an enemy. That's an enemy. Interesting. Maybe the color is white? What do, what do I use as a color when it's drawing those? This is one this text. Shit. Texture coordinates 112, 28. Yeah, this is the test and then we go to something else. So the texture coordinates start off with 112 and 28. Okay. What do we have here? 112. And what is that? 28? Hey, but that's correct. It's this one right here. Ah, I see. Wait a second. What are the, what is the color of this? I need to change I need to make the color better. Uh wait. Wait, no no no. It works. It works. It actually works. Wow. Damn. I need to text and fetch the color. And I do a vec4 of that. And I only use the red channel. That's going to be it. Shit. Really? Gives me zero. One MIP level, are you norm? But looking shit. Are there options when loading? <laughs> it really is super cool. <laughs> Relax, baby. Let me double check how I do this in motion canvas in the fragment shader. What am I doing? I'm loading the texture and I only use the glyph color red for the texture color. The VEC4. I'm only using the red channel. 
thought I could do the same. It's shit. I don't like it. Why is it invisible now? If render font? Eh? Hello again, Cakes and Chat. Hey, Pikachu. Hello there. Huh? What am I doing wrong? Where am I going wrong here? I'm literally... I'm literally sampling the Font Atlas. What is the difference? I do the exact same thing here. I have a couple more stuff here, but it literally that's uninteresting. At the end, I do this exact same thing. And I guess I don't multiply by color. I guess I do multiply by color. Maybe the color is, maybe the color is the issue. Maybe the color is not the correct color, but I'm supplying Sprite white. Color white for the text. When I draw a text, it's gonna be white. Color. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, get material index, form the color. Which should give me the correct material index, the correct color. And we can see that it's also supplying the correct color, which is white. So what am I doing wrong? I don't understand. Why is this literally black? Huh? Is it is it maybe like the round thing here? No, it's nothing to do with rounding. I don't understand. Oh, wait, the render option font does not happen, does it? This is not being called. It's it's using that. Let me double check if that's the case. color alpha is 1.9 how do you want to draw font with that Fail to compile shader and define variable glyph color okay well delete that it literally draws nothing seems to be nothing in the font atlas It literally draws nothing. What is the dot? Must be something in the vertex shader. You set the font. Probably apply texture only 
to alpha channel. I'm literally doing the same in another project and it just works there. What are the coordinates based on where the different size textures? They are based on what I calculate in the glyphs. Glyph color.r. Same thing. Texture coordinates. I get the texture coordinates in here. I get the texture color from the texture atlas. And I just overwrite the texture color here. Font color. We get that from the font atlas, but I'm not using the font color as far as I know. No, we don't. I don't. I can literally delete that. I don't understand. the difference is i don't know what i'm doing wrong because i literally do the exact same thing in both instances i literally have no idea that's what i do i take the font atlas here i take the texture atlas here And it produces me nothing for the font and the rest is drawn normally. And this is what I have in my font. Atlas. Let's launch again. Wait. No. Let's launch again. But if you would left color like input, you would get colored quad. Then if you get texture map. Day. You would get texture map, texture atlas, alpha and quad alpha. You would discard pixels that shouldn't be visible, but the color will stay. Wrong, bright, wrong, bright, wrong, bright, wrong, bright, wrong, bright, wrong, bright. Look, this is my texture coordinates. These are my texture coordinates. We start off with the top left one, 112 and 28. So if we look at the texture viewer of this font atlas, 112 to the right is, you can see that this number right here. 112 is literally this pixel right here. Literally this pixel right here. And 28 is the other one. So you can see down here that I have 112 and 28. So I'm sampling the top left from here. And then the, the right one is 126. Which if we look at the mesh viewer, for example, this one right here, which is the right one, the right vertex is 126 and 28 which is also correct and then we also have 47.40 or 0.4 for the bottom part which is if you look down here 47 is this one right here the bottom part of this glyph I flipped it because OpenGL loads textures like this. But it has nothing to do with like that happens in motion canvas too. I have the same issue in or I have the same thing in motion canvas. So I'm supplying the correct coordinates. I'm some I'm just somehow not using them right or something. I mean we can use round here again we can even do that outside glyph color is round
Wait, we have texture quartz. No, we don't need that. We have glyph color. And we have texture color. Maybe I need to use a different channel. Maybe I need to use the green channel. I don't know. No. I don't know why it's impossible for this to start two instances. So the green channel is not the correct one. RGB, maybe the blue channel. Blue channel doesn't do anything either. The alpha channel. No. I literally have no idea. That's my fragment shader for drawing fonts. Stupid YouTube doesn't allow links. I literally don't understand. I literally have no fucking idea what this shit is doing. But this is so stupid because I literally do the exact same thing. Stupid YouTube. Yeah, YouTube is shit. YouTube is shit when it comes to that. It's my fragment shader. Uniform text sampler. Nerds love you all. Texture red. Yeah, well, do the exact same thing. You create a vector out of the red channel. Yeah, that's literally exactly the same thing I do. Literally exactly the same thing I do. But I don't change RGB with the texture, just the alpha. Sure, because you are using the color. That's okay. Um, I'm just supplying, I'm just, uh, how to explain, like. Later, nerds. Hey, later, cheeseburgers, my man. See you later. I get color via uniform vec 3. Yeah. Yeah. You get it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And what I do is, I just take the red value and use that for everything. What is the difference? I guess I'm not generating mid-maps. Maybe I should have generated the mid-maps. Maybe there is something. Let's try if it's because of generating bitmaps. Oh my god, it's lagging. Please stop. Attention. Building completed. <laughs> oh my god. It was literally because of generating bitmaps. But the font looks like shit, so that font sucks. I don't know why anyone would use that font. It literally looks like shit. It literally just looks like sh trash. Absolute garbo. Absolute garbage font. Let's use uh, but, uh, better one. Wait, we downloaded this one, right? Why does it look so shit? Do I have to use 21 pixels? Maybe it's because I'm using 28. Maybe that looks better. Attention. Building completed. Looks still looks shit. Cut off. 
It's cutting off. Maybe I shouldn't drown. Maybe for that I actually should not drown. There's a pixel font on Google font if you're still considering fonts. No rounding allowed. I, th I don't think it's rounding though. Hey, to compile undefined variable IVIC2. No, my, my font looks like shit because I'm doing the stupid 0.6. So I probably have to do the following. Float. Chord. Offset. Is 0.6. And I have to do if pool render t dot render options and render render option font let's just see if that's the issue before i say the font is shit one two chord offset is 0.0 and then we just use the minus chord offset and chord offset everywhere I hate how annoying this is. Find variable curd offset, yeah. Difficult to type. No rounding allowed. There, that's pixel font on Google font. IRC, if you're still considering fonts. Pixel font on Google font. Well, we could look at that later as well. Now that looks a bit better for the font. The offsets are still off, still wrong. But at least the font doesn't look like shit anymore. I would like it to be bigger though. 32. Attention. Building completed. Attention. Building completed. Nah, it fucks up. Dude, I literally hate this shit. I hate OpenGL. Like, do I have to round now or what? Now it's being fucked up. It's called VT. Thirty three hundred twenty three. My last message message didn't send. God, YouTube is so bad. Holy shit, is YouTube bad? This is ridiculous. How bad it is. I don't understand how anyone can stream on YouTube. Really, crazy. How bad it is. Literally. Like I, I have, I'm losing so much interest in streaming on YouTube just by streaming here. Like the constant struggle with chat is just enormous. Nah, I just don't think it allows me to paste links. Yeah, that's the fucking problem that YouTube is. That's exactly the problem. You can post any links on Twitch if you want. YouTube is the future, bro. Yeah, the future, but currently it's not. Currently it's shit. I don't like it. It's shit. Yeah, it is. It is. So, anyways, uh, yeah, great. Open GL is shit too. OpenGL is shit too.
What else is he gonna do? Tech works north, my question. But you have to write the same thing called offset so many times. Super confusing. Why I have to do that? My question, Lamar. Yeah, what else am I gonna do? I have to write this because I thought that the rendering option font is gonna do something, but I guess I can change the renderer to make it so that in its font does adds in padding. Also, what about the height? Is the height okay? The height seems okay. So I guess I'll just plus width plus two. So just add in padding. It still cut them off though. It still did cut them off. Which is... Did you just turn off your Twitch stream and went live on YouTube? Yeah, I did. I did. No Capodistrius. Yes, I did. Yeah, the streams Vampire Survivors coding on YouTube and Tower Defense game on Twitch. Yeah. I do. I do. Okay, the font looks like shit. I think we can try a different font. See how that looks. Let's just try it. It looks so much better here. It actually looks a lot better here. Let's try this one. What's oh, Minecraft font? Interesting. Is it free? 100% free. Okay, Minecraft TTF. Try that. Guys, I'm 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 really getting exhausted by these OpenGL issues. Really, I literally am done with OpenGL at this point. I don't want to see any OpenGL anymore. To be honest, this is terrible. That does look a little bit better. We can use that for now. So why is the offset wrong? For me, it literally just works. text we have x origin and we just take in the offset why does it look so bad why does it literally look so bad what if we don't use any offset Building completed. Attention. Building completed. Attention. Building completed. Attention, building completed.
attention. Building completed. Why is it so terribly aligned? Let me use a font that I know works with this. Let me copy over the font from Motion Canvas. one was I using again I think it's go mono bold yeah I think I'm using that if this is also aligned wrong then I'm confused Because it literally just works. Attention. For me. Completed. Huh? It's funny how you can copy from one engine to the other engine. And in one engine it works while in the other it doesn't. Seems very weird to me. Also, in my other engine, I don't get these stupid cutoffs. I can see the E is being cut off. The T is also being cut off. Guys, I'm so I'm so done with this stuff. Really, I am done with this. I don't know what is wrong with the OpenGL code here that makes it so unbearable to work with compared to what I have here like if I start motion canvas let me start motion canvas it's just smooth everything is just smooth like the font looks crisp the lines look smooth I don't know what I'm doing wrong in the other project I literally do exactly the same but it looks entirely different. Uh, there's not an assertion of this. It's an assertion of the the Vampire Survivors game. By the way. So tell me, what do I do wrong? I literally copied the entire code. Badge. Oh, I just came here, Pog. Hey, Dink. My oh, man. It must be some sort of OpenGL option that is different between these two. Dink dong. It must be some sort of OpenGL option that is different between these two engines. I don't see why it doesn't work. Why it works here and it doesn't work there. Switch to Burvy Rust? No, that's not the that's not the solution. The solution is to find out what the problem is. I'm Kabe on YouTube. My messages pop up from Twitch, so I'ma just use Twitch chat. Sure, bro. Sure, bro. Thank you. Guys, I think I need to take a break and look at the engine code. It is like literally nothing is working and something is severely off and wrong here. There is literally something wrong. I might even take the engine from Motion Canvas and use it in the Vampire Survivors game. 
Maybe I even have to restart the project because I don't know. I'm totally lost. I don't know what's happening. I have never experienced these ginormous, ginormous differences. And I have copied Vulcan code, which you could argue is much more difficult to copy over than OpenGL code. Yet I have never had these types of issues between two projects copied in Vulkan. Never. And over here in OpenGL, I'm facing these weird ass problems that I've, ne that I've never seen before. And uh, I'm literally using the same stuff. Hello, bro. Hello, Mihart. I'm blown away by how, like, I, there must be something I'm doing wrong. I'm something that is different between the two engines. I don't know, some sort of OpenGL option or something. Like, it literally behaves in such a weird way in which it shouldn't. Like, literally, I can't even inspect this, right? Yeah. I, guess I should really not make it drop gems because it's super annoying. Or maybe we should make it so that the game just does not spawn as much. I don't know how this happens. Like, you can see clearly the E is cut off and the S is cut off. The top part. The font in here looks clean. The texture atlas, if we set it to 100%, it looks actually very good. Looks very clean. Can we open two render docs at the same time? We can. Finally catching a stream, my man. Glad you like it. I'm really glad you like it. I'm sorry that I have these weird issues that I've never faced before. I thought that in OpenGL it is going to be easier or more I can see why they created Vulcan like holy shit this is ridiculous like do you see any letter that is cut off you see any any letter that seems to be cut off in the slightest I don't the font doesn't look crazy good, not perfect, but it, def it definitely does not look like it's deformed or cut off. Why don't you reuse your engine and stop copy pasting stuff? Because I wanted to make an OpenGL tutorial and I wanted to make a uh, learn OpenGL. Not really a tutorial, but I wanted to show how to make a game in OpenGL because as far as I understand, OpenGL is easier than Vulkan. Vulkan takes like a thousand lines of code to properly set up. That's why, bruh. Wow, look at the difference between the two. There is already a difference. Look how smooth this is. Compared to this, there is already a difference and I'm doing the exact same thing. There is some option that I'm using differently in OpenGL. What is this? When I search about fonts in OpenGL, many results are about something called free type. Is that what you're using? Yeah, yeah. I mean, free, it's not about free type. It's, this is not free type. <laughs> I 
Okay, let's let's compare the code. Okay, let's compare that. This is ridiculous. This is terrible. So this is this is the uh, texture code that I use in the Vampire Survivors clone, which creates this result right here. And I would argue that this result is very smooth compared to this result, which looks very sharp. Like you guys can tell the difference, right? You can tell the difference that this looks smooth and this is sharp. Am I right? So that is number one difference. And here's the code that I used to load in the texture. Something to do with the mid maps. Did you use it in both? I'm using it in both, yeah. Okay, we can put those side by side. So that is motion canvas. Put these side by side here. Be careful. So that is the uh, that is motion canvas, and that is what I do in. <laughs> I literally copied that. Padding is different in both textures. Yeah, sure, but I mean, I can add that in here too, if you want. If you want, I can add that in here too. Quickly build that. Attention, building completed. Then uh, we open motion canvas here again in this one. No. Launch. No. I need to wait a bit. But we can skip forward. I think it was E. Okay. Now we can do a screenshot. We don't need that anymore. Draw call input texture. 100%. I mean, it's close. I mean, it's also, this one is a bit bigger, so it's unfair. Let me, it's actually unfair. Wait a second. I think it's 32. Attention. Building Maybe it looks actually the same then. Might actually look the same. Difficult to say. I think it's the same. Still, this one looks smooth. Her. In a way. But I think it's actually the exactly the same. No, it's actually exactly the same. Okay. Good. So that one is nice. Uh, that is... They are the same. Good. Thank God. Now, okay, they are the same. Oh, I see there's a bug in render dock. You can select this same one twice. They are the same, good. And I still don't understand how the font over here is cut off. Like you see the E is cut off and the S is cut off. See that, right?
God, I hate that. I hate that about Open Jail. You see how the E is cut off? The S is cut off too. And obviously, or most likely, the T too. Do you have a problem with positioning? So probably the cuts are from that. What size to texture size? I mean, I'm also drawing differently in motion canvas a little bit. Like... I draw top left. I don't draw center, I draw top left. So if I say this is the position and I draw the quad, then it's being drawn. Then I draw it downwards. I don't take it, I don't make it so that I draw in the middle, around the middle point, I draw top left. So the vertices are different here. But that is the only difference. So that, but that could already be the issue can you test more letters let me try copying this part right here putting that in survivors let me see here what do i do i check the transform it will destroy the game. So I'm gonna have to be careful. Not to lose any progress. And then after that... I normalize the position. And I supply that to the shader, to the fragment shader. Now for rendering options and position, like, yeah, rendering options can be, I guess, done at the very top. Because that's the first one I write. And then after that, the color. So this goes away. If I didn't do anything wrong, that should be everything I need to do to change. Yeah, see how everything is... I like how it's rotated weirdly now. <laughs> How's it rotated now? Oh yeah, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. That's because I need to swap those two around. That's the only... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, at least it looks correct now. And it's interesting how the other stuff is not cut out. Very interesting. Should I just keep it like this? And then instead of... Instead of having it top left here, I just do... Instead of plus... Uh, th wait, that's top left, right? We could just... Make it so that T... Dot position... Minus equals t dot size divided by two. Wonder if that changes. That changes it back to this weird ass. <laughs> oh my god. What do I do, guys? How is it changing this so much?
I didn't. I don't understand how I'm introducing uh, texture coordinate problems by adding in half the size of my quad. How do I introduce problems like that? How do I make it so that this is cut off? Only because I add in half the size of my texture or, or my transform. Can someone explain that to me, please? Are the sizes right? For each character? What do you mean by are the sizes right? They are right. I don't know... I mean, we can do the following. I actually want to check if... I actually want to rewrite Vampire Survivors with this type of rendering. Top left rendering. Like, how? Literally how? Literally how? If I remove foot, what happens? Wait a second. I don't round. Let's not round. Okay, we don't round. All right, no rounding at all. And then in the game, we change it back to zero, zero, eight again. Can I? Can I generate a fucked up texture this way? Is it possible for me to generate a fucked up texture? If you guys see any crystal... Oh fuck, I get the leveling up bullshit. Oh no. If you guys see any crystal that has a white line anywhere, please tell me, okay? If you notice any crystal that has a white line next to it, I can't produce a single crystal with a white line next to it. Why is that? I can't produce a single graphical bug. If you guys remember the graphical bug that we had a couple of days ago. Remember? It's gone. And I'm not adding any padding. The only thing I'm doing is top left rendering. I draw quads, I draw quads from the top. Currently I draw them from the bottom right. Oh, I, I just created one. God damn it. Okay, I just create oh, I created another one. Ah, oh, fuck you. Ah, oh, god damn it. So I guess it is still possible. Uh, bruh. Cringe. Okay. Forget what I said. Forget what I we round again. Letters are not center aligned, but the offsets by bearing Y. So you should just move half 
size it would mess up the bearing y you could move them to zero remove bearing y then move them by half size and then add the bearing y i think it's fine i guess we'll just uh, dislocate them then that is okay add some hopium here yeah there was some hopium true What? Wait, 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 what? This is back, but this one looks totally fucked now. The test. What happened to test? What? blending for that huh? we need color blending for this otherwise it looks like that and it's cutting off something from the east still oh my god i'm so fucking annoyed by this it just doesn't stop This OpenGL bullshit is really pissing me off. It's totally annoying. If you ask me, that's like the number one reason why I shouldn't be using OpenGL. This stupid offset... Stupid bullshit. This, this makes literally no sense. In my opinion. I hate it. The year is cut off. This does not cut off the E. But the test looks off. You make me glad I'm still using Vulcan here. <laughs> This is t terrible. Really, it is. It's really bad. Okay.
The S looks good, but it cuts off the pixels because I'm rounding here. Oh wow, now it looks much better. Not sure what I did, but I guess rounds was the issue. Okay, 0.5 looks good. Rounds is bad. And then over here we do an, another if check, I guess. If we are rendering font, then we align to top left. Now if we are not rendering font, then we align to center. That's what I meant. If not drawing font, then we align to top left. Uh, we align to center. And that could be another rendering option. Actually, it could be another rendering option. Let's see. Okay, now we have a nicely looking test font. And maybe if we now use a different one, It doesn't look shit. What do you guys think? What the hell? Pork? So it works? Looks like it works, yeah. Hey, stacker. Collect off stuff. My man. Good morning. Hi. Which one do we use? The pixel font, the first one, the VCR mono. Take a look at that. And tomorrow we're gonna make... <sighs> uh, uh, I don't like it at all, man. I mean... I mean, wait, 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 before we... Before we... Uh... Try out something else. This I is... leave the stream for some hours, come back, and you install the font library. You saw the font library. Yeah, I did. Because I don't know how to load in TTF files, and they were very confusing to unpackage. So I'd rather use that. What about if we do the following now? We do color.rgb, and we do color.r at the alpha value. That makes it look kind of cringe, but we could try. Creating a trans uh, transparent transform. Which just which is just an internal void add transform transparent and it does render data transparent transforms dot add right we don't have that yet but we're gonna make one array now we call it trans trans Parent transforms. Boom. Attention. Looking good, looking Build good. Completed. And in the GL renderer. In GL render. We not only draw. Oh, I see. We copy the transforms. Then we swap buffers. When do we draw? Where's my draw call? Oh, draw arrays instance. There we go. And then copy transparent transforms to the GPU. We can use the same buffer. And then instead of copying the Transpar the transforms we copy the 
transparent transforms. But we, are, we also do the following. Also, we should not be doing this. This. And this is something I do in motion canvas already. Let's see if that works. I'm enabling blend and the blend function. Wow, I hate this. You upload wrong transforms? I do. Oh, this is the upload, right? Okay, we enable blend. Literally, please. Just fucking copy those two! Oh my god, copy them! Thank you. <sighs> transparent transform count zero, transparent transforms elements, GL enable, GL blend. Um. How do I disable GL blending? I don't want to have blending enabled all the time. How do I disable that? Ah, okay. So GL disable, GL blend. That, right? Attention. Building completed. Great that I don't see anything now. Why is that? Triggering. Look, now it works. Now we have font. Good, and we can use the. We are using the correct color here. Kikas, how do I do the kind of art that Google has? I don't know. What do you mean? Okay, this time instead of go mono bold, we use the VCR mono. Give it another chance. Last chance. Attention. 
Attention. Building Attention. completed. Building completed. Does not look as bad, but it still looks shit. In my opinion. In my opinion, it still does look kind of shitty. Not gonna lie. Let's try a different color though. Close motion cameras, it's annoying. Do you still have OpenGL now? You mean have or hate? Attention. Building completed. Let's try the other font, the Minecraft font. Attention. Building completed. I mean, that's just how Minecraft font looks, eh? Could have been better. The reason why Minecraft font looks like that is because it's Minecraft font. The S. I don't I like that one. Look, That one looks good here. What is that? Rainy hearts. Attention. Building completed. It's small. But we can make it bigger. Attention. Building completed. I think I like this font. Guys, we're gonna use this for now. It's fine. We are using this until it looks like shit. Okay? I don't like Minecraft too much. Looks like Saru font. It does? It has some weird eye points. I don't know why you would put eye points like that. I think it's destroying the font. Hey, maybe that one. How about this one? Looks a bit more thick. Nah, it's fine. No, maybe this one. 8 pixel. Ah, even smaller. That one looks good too. I'm gonna download this one. That's the last one. Logica. <laughs> oh my god, what the fuck is that? TTF? Give me the font like everyone else, bro. Ship it. Looks like Saru font. Oh, that's big. Attention. Building completed. Twenty four should be correct Attention. size. Building completed. Yeah. Do you know why twenty four looks good and the other one didn't look good? Because the original font size uh, of the TTF file is 8. It's 8 pixels. And I tried scaling it to 28, which is not a... It's not a multiplicator of... And therefore it had small uh, shades on the left uh, side 
because it was trying to uh, give the impression of like scaling by 2.4 or something so uh, changing the scale factor from 2.4 to 3 which is uh, 24 well, actually it was uh, 3.4 but anyways that's beside the point I'm now scaling it to a multiple of 8 and therefore it looks crisp if I were to scale that to a uh, like a fractional part uh, a fraction then it would look shit again but we're gonna use this I think I, I don't really like that it's spaced out so much but for now we will use it and uh, I guess we can create a small little menu here What do you think? Make a small little menu. Should be simple. Yeah, 24, 32, 40, etc. Yeah. We could try making a fast menu out of this. So we have font and if we want to use font effectively we need to make a I want to make a spliced or a sliced menu meaning we need to have a bunch of sprites like doing this is with rules we can it put feels good to be a library Andy Hukakis if it's good to be a library Andy Hukakis huh, it's good to be a library Andy Hukakis huh, yeah it's nice loading in TTF files if I was able to load in my own TTF files then uh, we would not need a library so what's your point bitch huh Yeah, feels good. No, but you're right. A little bit. Like, it is nice just loading in TTF files. That is true. Sometimes it is nice to use a library. What I don't like is that it's allocating memory. To open the file. Like, it could just give me a buffer. It could just ask me for a buffer. You know. So we have a sliced menu right here. It is 16 by 16. And then if we ha want to have a render interface where we say, okay, I would like to draw... A sliced quad. Yeah, it needs to take in a, a sliced sprite. Takes in a sprite ID, sprite ID, a vec2 position, and a vec2 size. And of course, draw data. Control color and all the other stuff. This one is going to be difficult to implement uh, because the size can be arbitrary and uh, we could f we could be fighting floating point imprecisions. So we definitely have to 
uh, we definitely have to make some conversions to int. We have the text. Need a level number somewhere so I know how long I lasted. Yeah, that will be done tomorrow. That's not even difficult to do. Very simple to do. That takes like one second. I would just like to uh, supply the background of the menu now. And then we are more or less done. So we know that we have a sliced menu right here. And if we say that every single sliced menu follows some rules, it's not even that difficult to set up. Like, for example, we can say the top left part is always going to be 5 by 5. Okay. So we know that if we draw a sliced sprite, we need to draw the top left first. And we could start by drawing that. And uh, here comes in here are some some issues that we need to take into account. So maybe we want to instead of saying it's going to be 5 by 5, maybe we extend that a bit to 6 by 6 and the reason for that is 6 by 6 is divisible by 2 whereas 5 by 5 is not I need to think whether 5 by 5 is correct or 6 by 6 is correct and for that I need a picture I need to, to draw a picture optimize this. <laughs> <laughs> shut the fuck up the bitch. Let's close a few windows. Let's draw a paint picture. If we want to draw a quad at a certain position here let's say that position is 100 100 okay then to the very top left part if we draw it exactly at 100 100 that's the wait that's the position And let's say the size of this thing is 50 by 50. I like using 50. So over here we have a 50 size of 50. And uh, over here, I guess it's a size of 70. Doesn't really matter too much. The left part is important first. So then, then that means, well, this part right here is going to be 25. And so we start off at 100 minus 25 is the top left part. Okay. On X, in X direction. And then we need to take into account that we draw. So this top left part, if we want to draw a texture, if we want to draw the mini texture over here of our menu, which is supposed to look something like this. Then we can't draw it at this location. We need to actually draw it at this location in the middle. But right? we need to draw it here. Because it's a centered quad, which is kind of annoying for UI to deal with. And maybe we should make it so that some UI elements are just not centered. But I really like the idea of drawing something centered. Not sure, it just it makes things a lot easier to to position. At least text is very easy to position. Like this. And so we, we do minus 25 and then we need to do a plus. And so I think 5 by 5 is better because then we can do plus 3. And we set this, we, we use this as a magic number because we, we need to have some rules. So saying, okay, this one, this top left part over here, is always going to be five by five. 
And then we draw it around that middle point. So we start off with the X coordinate float X. On well, the top left is Vec2. Top left is position minus size divided by 2 plus 3.0F. Attention. Building completed. Attention. Building completed. Is this how math defines the plus operator between a vector and a number? If I do vector plus number, I add the number to the x component of the vector and the y component of the vector. Is that how the operator plus is defined for vectors and Don't scalars? Don't call it a scalar when you add. Well, what is that then? A number? Then? But that's how you define that's how it's defined, correct? Attention. Building completed. Okay, and so we then we can then draw a our first quad. We, and for that we need to get the sprite. Is I uh, get right sprite ID. In order to draw a quad, I think we want to draw a transform at this point. So position and size is something that I need to set every time. Atlas offset also needs to be set every time and sprite size too. Render options and material index are simple. Yeah, that's totally fine. I like real super cool, so I'm gonna use Scalar. Now that is, I need to define that. I know that I'm scaling my XP bar by two. And so I know that I use five by five. And so the size over here should be a vec two of 10. Since we are drawing five by five. Then the atlas offset is s dot t dot atlas offset is s dot atlas offset and the sprite size is i vec2 i don't have a vec2 and i vec2 pretty sure i do i don't
Building attention. Building completed. Attention. Building completed. So, we know that's five by five for the top left. And then we draw the, we draw a transform. Taking NT. Oh, I guess we add the transform, huh? It's a little cringe, to be honest, but... What do we have? We have draw data. Does draw data have everything? Size, position... Vertex offset, sprite ID? No, it does not. We need to add, we actually need to add a transform here. Okay, and then we draw the top middle, which is gonna be by five again, but this is gonna be variable. A dot 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 times five. And that depends on the vector two size. It needs to be at least one pixel. Super crew is right. You can call it a scalar. <laughs> In mathematics, a scalar is apparently a real number as opposed to a vector, but normally you use them to scale a vector, hence scalar. Good. Wait, we take 10, so it needs to be less than 20. And we say, okay, well, we remove 20 and we at least draw, at least we draw one pixel. We can get the size X and size Y up right here. We need to set those again. We should template our vector class and get rid of this IVEC class for good. No. 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 I like it. Mm -mm. I like it. I don't like it. It's shit. So, I uh, forgot something. We need to turn this into an int. And after we turn that into an int, we need to turn that back to a float. This is clamping the value. So, if we supply some weird stuff, we are golden. Okay. That should not happen if I supply proper values. Then I scale pixel art only by one point, two point, three point. Uh, but it could happen. So we make sure that we use proper values for size X and size Y. Otherwise it will get hairy. Yeah, so we skip the 10 pixels on the top left. We have our new position. And then the size is going to be a vector to 
of 10 pixels down but size x wide the atlas offset is going to be s dot atlas offset plus an i back to of five pixels on the right and then the sprite size of this is uh five pixels no actually how much we need another we can say that it's actually six pixels we don't need that much we could only use one pixel here it's fine and stretch that indefinitely but let's say it's six pixels and then five pixels down then we add in another transform and see how slowly we are slowly constructing our our sliced menu the drop right is going to be five times five again so that we can copy this again mostly this can be that then the atlas offset is uh, we just go on the x-axis 11 pixels to the right the size is going to be another 10 by 10 vector and the position at this point is top left plus 10 pixels plus size x and then we have top right we are we only have six left draw middle left the middle left what's a sliced sprite you don't know what a sliced sprite is have you ever seen nine slicing where you can basically take a, uh, a thing like this and draw it as big as you want without having scaling issues so over here we take top left and we go down by 10 pixels the size of this is actually 12 pixels oh uh, no actually it is 10 pixels on the x axis and 12 pixels on the y because what applies to the width also applies to the height if we have 5 by 5 here then we have a 5 by 6 element here and since we scale this by 2 we are just hard code this right now because it's pixel art but we scale it by 2 the scaling is like hard coded in here. I should probably I should have probably extracted that, but now I'm this far. I'll probably extract that later. So yeah, the size is going to be 10 by 12. And then the Atlas offset. At this point, we start with zero. We don't go off into the X direction, but we go down by five into the Y direction. The sprite size this time is five by six like an inversion of that so we have to draw middle left now and then next we draw the middle middle god it's already it's already five o'clock holy shit oh it goes so fast man the position now we add in ten ten by ten we skip the very we actually can do vec2 here vec underscore 2 10 by 10 the size is going to be size x and size y that's the middle part and the atlas offset is 5 by 5 plus 5 5 middle 
And the sprite size in the middle is 6 by 6 as far as I remember. This one. It's going to be this quad right here. 6 by 6. Now we have to make sure that we don't draw any weird stuff in here because then that will be stretched. So this has to be the same color. Okay. Since we are scaling this indefinitely. These have to be the same color. I'm gonna start coding in a few hours. Then it'll code to 5 in the morning. Okay. Uh, draw middle right. By the way, who thinks this will work for the first time, huh? <laughs> I don't. Definitely not. So for the right side, we need to add in the size X, which is what we're doing here. But we're also adding in me. You think it's going to be the first? It didn't watch the code, so not sure. There's no way. The middle right is the size Y and 10 pixels again. Oh, wait, actually, that's 12 pixels on the X axis. Yeah, yeah. And then the Atlas offset is 11 pixels here and 5 pixels down. And the sprite size is 5 on X and 6 on Y. We are almost done. The draw bottom left. Oh, oh boy. We need to add in size X and size Y. The transform size is thankfully very simple. It's a vec2 of 10 pixels. <laughs> it's not gonna work, there's no way. Uh, the Atlas offset on the x-axis is 0 and on the y-axis is 11. And the sprite size is 5 by 5. Or I guess an IVEC of 5. We use that here to say it's 6 by 6. Uh, was that it? Was that bottom left? I'm pretty sure I made a mistake. Uh, we'll fix that. Once we see it in game. Bottom middle. The position. Actually, the bottom left was wrong in terms of X. We start at 0 on X. And now we start at 10 pixels. And the size of the middle is going to be a VEC2 where it is 10. And then plus size X. And for Y, it's 10. The Atlas offset is 5 pixels and the sprite size is 6 by 5. Guys, last one. Last one! Hell yeah! Last one. We add in the size X to the bottom right. The size of it is 10 by 10 again. The Atlas offset is 11 by 11. And the sprite size is 5 by 5. Attention, building completed. So I guess IVEC plus IVEC is not an operator that I have defined yet. 
I only have minus for Ivex. Delete, uh, not delete, add the plus one. By the way, what are we listening to? Okay, good. I only have music for three hours, by the way. Wow! I wrote all of this code and it just, it is just correct. Bruh. That's crazy. Let's just run the game real quick. If it works. Seems to be working. But it doesn't mean anything if it doesn't do anything. So game CPP. Let's just go into uh, where we draw the text here. Draw. What is it called? Sliced Sprite. So, and that is the, in assets that age, that is the sprite sliced menu. The first one. And a position of 100 by 100. And a size of 100 by 100. I really like 100 by 100. Attention. Oh boy, it's not gonna work! It's not gonna work, bro! Not gonna work, man. Ah, oh, damn, bro. God damn it! No! Let's draw a quad. <laughs> I think I know the problem. I think I know the problem. Should be able to fix it really easily. Every time where I use size. I could try dividing it by two. Actually, no. Wait. I don't think that size is correct. Uh, that wait, wait, wait. I don't think that division by two is correct. It's about the positioning. So that top right thing, I need to divide the size by two. The middle left is okay. But. That over here divided by two. It's almost correct, almost correct, but not really. happening attention building completed almost we almost have it almost correct the only thing that is wrong now is the left parts finally back house progress Close. Progress is close. Let me let me draw this. Oh no! Fuck! We are close to drawing a nine sliced quad for menus. 
We'll need that in the future. We have the right part almost right. Sweet, I'll finally stop procrastinating and start learning how to get ASIM working in my engine. Guys, I think I'll do the following. I'll get this stuff right. I don't know. Like, uh, I'll try until... I'll try 20 more minutes. I'll try 15 more minutes, okay? 15 minutes if it works it works if it doesn't then i'll stop i actually wanted to do youtube and by youtube i mean a youtube video not streaming on youtube i'm not getting to it <laughs> i'm literally not getting to anything uh... Oh yeah, now I now I remember. Attention. Building completed. I wonder. Good. Building we draw the middle. That's the one that's correct. Let's not draw the middle right. Let's not draw the bottom left. Not draw the middle middle. Bottom middle. Attention. Okay. Building completed. No, bottom right. Attention. Let's start Building with the top completed. left. Where do I draw top left? What? Attention. Building what just happened? My entire computer currently... For some reason just... Oh, okay. Let's just look at top left. And the middle middle. Oh no. Attention. Building completed. Attention. Building completed. Attention. The left Building is right completed. there. Okay. It's actually correct. I'm drawing a quad and the top left position is actually correct. Okay, what about the top right position? The top right is moved way too much to the left. Oh. 
But the top middle needs to... be there Attention. but i guess Building it needs completed. to skip five pixels Attention. yeah Building completed. i don't know about the top right part though that Looks like this is too short. Attention. Building completed. Ah, in the top right needs to cover the entire distance. Attention. Building completed. Okay, how about the following? Let's add in a float scale. Right, top left looked good. Attention, building completed. Attention, building completed. On the size as well. What topic will the new YouTube video be about? It's just a simple tutorial on how to do collision. I want to try doing my motion canvas Attention. thing with that. something can someone please explain to me how i draw two quads at the same time yet one of these quads is smaller than the other one even though they both have the same size can someone please explain that to me how that works open gel is just so weird and janky maybe i'm doing it wrong I doubt it. What the fuck, man? That just scared me. Who the fuck was that? What the fuck, bro? Fucking bitch. Who was that? Collect off stuff. Bruh.
Um, master. The calculations are in, and, um, the powers of your brain are overwhelming. True. True. Guys, I think I need a break. I think I need a break. I have been sitting programming for more than eight hours now. I need a break, I think. I'm surprised how well I could program today without any interruptions. Very happy. Good day. It's a good day today. Yes, we didn't get this done. But I can play around tomorrow and then just fix it. Buy that. B size. Five times scale. So this is correct. Atlas offset. Maybe that needs to be 10. Attention. Big this W's today, me. hell yeah, man. Oh, that's my game. Not sure how my game got in there. Interesting. I needed to do plus 10 and not plus 11. That's a bit confusing, but I take it, I suppose. And then if I use the, if I add in back the top part. How does that look? Attention. The top part Build is too attention. short. It's literally too short. Interesting. Needs to cover the size of X. And I'm, maybe I'm positioning it in the wrong location. Maybe this needs to be 10 plus size X, not 5. <laughs> I'm going crazy! Ah! I should stop. Stop. Attention. No, it's literally too short. Maybe the plus three is the issue here. Attention. Building completed. That moves everything to the left. Maybe instead of plus three, I need to do plus three point or F times scale. Attention. Building completed. That does look better. That face filter is cursed, I love it. Okay, um, for some reason the size of my thing is not... Maybe we should call it float edge size is scale times 3. I could say edge. Or we'll call it edge middle, which is scale times three. Oh wait, actually it's 2.5. Point five is a problem though. Attention, building completed.
Long work day away from home for me tomorrow, but I'll see you on Sunday, and my man. Alright, guys, I will... I will etch out the specifics. It's one of those annoying problems where, oh, I'm drawing it in the middle, I'm drawing it like this, I'm drawing it like that. Kind of annoying. Top left would be much easier. Maybe I'll add in a rendering option top left. I think I'll not need to take a step back. Think about how I want to draw a UI. And then just draw the UI. Right. I don't think there is a point in continuing like this. I can uh, find a solution while I'm doing other things. I can, you know, clear my mind and then come back to this problem. Maybe I'll just add in a rendering option that says top left. And then if I have the rendering option top left, I'll just draw it from the top left. And uh, that is, it is what it is. Yeah, anyways, uh, I'm not even gonna push today because yes, we have font in the game yet. But I mean, we could git add dot git commit minus M. Edit a bunch of fonts and uh, started working on last menu drawing not working yet there we go anyone if anyone wants to if anyone wants to try it it is now there to be looked at okay guys i need to take a break see you Azen, my man everyone i hope you have a great day i appreciate everyone that has been watching and supporting by watching really appreciate that thank you guys for the big support i will see you tomorrow same time same place and then we continue working on collision in my game giga chat true I'll see you tomorrow.